Good evening. Thank you for joining us for this virtual meeting for the Sinead Mendocino Area Sewer Replacement Project. I'm Mark Milan with Data Instinct, and I have been asked to serve as the facilitator for the virtual meeting tonight. I'll be coordinating with Eric Robert, who is with the City of Santa Rosa and is the supervising engineer for this project. I also want to introduce our Zoom host, Roberta Atha. She is the administrative analyst with the city and will be coordinating questions and input from the public. Uh, next slide, please. Now I would like to turn it over to Eric, who will introduce the rest of our presenters for this evening. Thank you, Mark. And thank you all for joining us. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide an overview of the project, discuss traffic <laughs> and provide an opportunity for public participants to ask questions of our other presenters, who I would like to introduce now. You heard from Mark Milan, our facilitator for tonight, and I'm Eric Robert, supervising engineer for the city of Santa Rosa. We are fortunate also to have presenting tonight, Emma Walton, Deputy Director, Engineering Resources for Santa Rosa Water, who will provide an overview of Santa Rosa Water's infrastructure. Greg Dwyer, Associate Civil Engineer and Project Manager, who will describe the project and its key components. And Mike Van Mitty, Associate Traffic Engineer, will describe the traffic control measures the contractor will be required to implement during construction. Also joining us tonight are Scott Westrope and Paul Lowenthal, from the Santa Rosa Fire Department, and Alex Kulik with GHD, the design consultant for the project. They will be available to answer any questions you may have after you have heard our presentation. Next slide, please. Eric, this is Roberta. I neglected to start the interpretation, so I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment and start that. Thank you, you're all set. Okay, next slide, please. You may be wondering why this project is even happening, and tonight we hope to address that in some detail for you. Overall, the project adds great value to the community. It will replace aging sewer pipe, reduce the potential for sewer overflows, protect Pauling Creek and its habitat, provide improved and safer access for routine inspection and maintenance and improve water pressure and flows. Overall, the project will ensure your homes and businesses can depend on safe, reliable sewer and water systems now and in the future. Next slide, please. Regarding schedule, I know it's only July, but we wanted to give you a heads up of what's coming. The construction portion of the project will be sent out to bid in early August. We anticipate a contract will be awarded in early September with construction anticipated to begin later in the fall. You may wonder why construction is starting in the fall. As you will hear, this project includes excavations to depths of 30 feet or more. To do this work safely and effectively, groundwater needs to be at its seasonal low which is in the fall, just before the wet season starts. This timing is important for the protection and safety of the crews who are undertaking this activity and will help the project to move forward more efficiently. If everything goes as planned, we anticipate that construction would be completed by the fall of 2022. So this is a two-year project. Next slide, please. And to provide further details, let's begin by hearing from Emma Walton. Emma? Thank you, Eric. Um, as Eric mentioned, I'm Emma Walton, the Deputy Director of Engineering Resources for the Water Department. 
the water department is responsible for maintaining a lot of infrastructure. We own and operate about 1,200 miles of pipe and thousands of valves and manholes and hydrants. Next slide, please, Roberta. Given the magnitude of the infrastructure that we are responsible for maintaining, uh, we have a very uh, robust capital improvement program. We invest about $25 million every year into our water and sewer systems uh, to really ensure that we maintain redundant, reliable systems, uh, ensure that we are being good um, stewards of the environment and meeting all of our regulatory compliance uh, requirements, and ultimately to minimize the risk to um, our community uh, with a data-driven approach to prioritizing projects. So we maintain many metrics and track many metrics and information about our systems, including the location and the age and the condition of all of our assets. And then we use this information to prioritize projects throughout the city. Next slide, please. This is a map that shows the project location to kind of put this project in context. The Sinead Mendocino Area Sewer Replacement Project is, is shown in the circle there. Um, we, um, as this is overlaid on a map of our entire sewer system and we undertake uh, projects similar to this uh, throughout the city and we systematically replace portions of our system um, every single year. So this particular project rose in priority, um, as Eric mentioned, in order to address aging and deteriorating infrastructure, as well as capitalize on the opportunity to relocate the sewer trunk away from the banks of Pollen Creek and provide our maintenance and operations crews with better access. I'm gonna hand it over to Greg Dwyer, who's the project manager. He's going to provide an overview and provide uh, much more detail about the specifics of this project. Thank you, Emma. I'm Greg Dwyer, the project engineer for this project. We're very excited about this opportunity to tell you about our project and to hear from you. The North Trunk Sewer is a primary trunk sewer that serves a large area of Northeast Santa Rosa which is assessed from Sinead Road, Parker Hill Road, and Terra Linda Drive. Stream bank erosion along Pollen Creek has exposed parts of the sewer line over time. Although sections of this sewer were rehabilitated, repaired, and improved throughout the 60s until 2005, the majority of this area of the city's sewer collection system is over 50 years old and was constructed from materials that are no longer in standard use. Next slide, please. Due to the age and location of the North Trunk Sewer alignment, inspection and maintenance of the trunk main is challenging and costly. This project will relocate the sewer alignment away from Pollen Creek to the road right of way. New water mains in Sinead Road and Laminas Avenue will loop existing systems together, improving performance and reducing maintenance costs. The goal of the project is to replace the 12 inch trunk sewer that runs down Pollen Creek within the project limits. Work includes the removal and or replacement of sewer mains along Sinead Road, Lamitas Lane, Lamitas Avenue, Strawberry Drive, Plum Drive, and Mendocino Avenue and of course the abandonment of the trunk sewer down Pollen Creek. New sewer mains will be installed within the project limits and as shown in the figure. Replacement of the trunk main is important 
so that the city can eliminate any potential future work along Pollen Creek as it pertains to maintenance access and also the potential for spills. Next slide, please. This photo is looking east and is of a manhole to be abandoned along Pollen Creek near Strawberry Drive. What you don't see is just outside is Pollen Creek. And the, it's very difficult to access this manhole to do any kind of maintenance. Next slide, please. This photo is looking westerly along Pollen Creek near Strawberry Drive. Plum Drive is near the top of the hill. This manhole would be very difficult just to, to locate alone in the need of uh, an emergency access to get to it to do any sort of maintenance. Um, or even you can't get a vehicle down there. So you have to manually bring all your equipment down there, which is a, a, a big obstacle. Next slide, please. This photo shows a concrete block over a semi-exposed portion of a sewer main that, pol that crosses Pollen Creek near Lamitas Lane. This main will be abandoned as part of the project. And as you can see, you can imagine debris coming down this creek in higher flows could hit this line and create a spill hazard and an environmental hazard as well. Um, next slide, please. This slide shows the limits of the project and the new sewer and water mains that will be installed. I wanna point out that this map is also on our project website, shenatesewerproject.com. Next slide, please. The majority of the new sewer mains and all of the new water mains will be installed with open trench construction. This photo shows typical open trench construction, which is similar to the work that you likely see around various parts of the city. This work will be plated at the end of each day. Next slide, please. Because of the depth of the new sewer in a portion of the alignment along Chenate Road and Strawberry Drive, trenchless construction technology will be used to install the sewer. This, this photo shows a typical trenchless installation and what will be seen for that construction. A shaft will be installed down to the required depth of close to 40 feet. Next slide, please. This photo shows the trenchless construction technique that will occur down in the shaft. So this is the previous slide, but looking straight down in, you can see the workers down there working. A hole is bored out from the shaft to another receiving shaft, and then the pipe is pushed in at the required depth and grade. Next slide, please. There are also two crossings below Pollen Creek that will utilize trenchless technology. This slide shows that technology, which will be used at Chenate Road and Mendocino Avenue, which will, which will be just past the, dri the, the driveway entrance to Pete's Coffee, and at the east end of the project along Chenate Road. Next slide, please. Once the project is complete and all the sewer and water mains are complete, the roads will be resurfaced. Lamitas Lane and Strawberry Drive will be completely reconstructed. Lamitas Avenue will have a full width overlay north of Pollen Creek. The remainder of the roads where trenching was completed will be paved over the trench widths at a width of seven feet. This includes Lamitas Avenue south of Pollen Creek. A lot of work was done developing a traffic control plan and detour plan between city traffic engineering and city fire department. 
At this point, I would like to hand it over to Mike Van Mitty with City Traffic Engineering so he can talk to you about some of those efforts. Thank you, Greg. I'm Mike Van Mitty, Associate Traffic Engineer in Santa Rosa's Transportation and Public Works Department. We understand that work zone traffic control will have significant impacts for many of you, and I hope to explain what those impacts will be. As Greg described in the previous slides, there are several different construction methods which will require different traffic control plans to accommodate the various activities. Some of the activities will allow the street to be opened outside of working hours, while others will require continuous 24-hour closures for their duration. The work will be done in stages, so the project will not have all the described traffic control measures implemented at the same time. Every effort will be made to accommodate pedestrians and bicyclists throughout the project limits. We do not anticipate any pedestrian detours or sidewalk closures. Next slide, please. We will break up the project into two segments and describe their different traffic control strategies. Starting from Mendocino Avenue and working east to Humboldt Street and Belvedere Way, traffic control will allow one lane in each direction. There will be parking prohibitions throughout this segment. There will also be turn restrictions for driveways and side streets throughout. Most turn restrictions will require drivers to turn right into and out of side streets or driveways. We anticipate significant delays at the intersection of Mendocino Avenue and Sinead Road during construction in that area. To accommodate construction activities in that intersection, the east and west approaches on Sinead Road will reduce from three lanes in each direction to one lane in each direction. An optional detour will be available using Humboldt Street, Franklin Avenue, and Lewis Road. The second segment of the project traffic control is from Humboldt Street, Belvedere Way to Terra Linda Drive. The construction activities in this segment require one half of the roadway width. The traffic control will allow one way eastbound only traffic in this segment. There are some driveways and streets within this segment and specific instructions for those residents will be communicated to them. There will be a barricade closing the road in the westbound direction at Terra Linda Drive. Next slide, please. In an effort to keep westbound Sinead Road traffic off of Terra Linda Drive and other local streets in the area, westbound Sinead Road will be closed at Parker Hill Road. Local traffic only will be allowed westbound between Parker Hill Road and Terra Linda Drive. During this phase of construction, the emergency access gate at the north end of Terra Linda Drive at Lake Park Drive will be open for northbound only traffic. In addition, the bollards between Andy Way and Baldwin Way will be removed to allow northbound only traffic. Next slide, please. This slide shows the bollards between Andy Way and Baldwin Way that will be removed to facilitate local northbound traffic only. This removal will be temporary and only during this phase of construction. Next slide, please. This slide shows the emergency vehicle access gate between Terra Linda Drive and Lake Park Drive that will be opened to facilitate local northbound traffic only. This gate opening will be temporary and only during this phase of construction. Next slide, please. During the westbound closure at Terra Linda Drive, the official detour will be westbound Sinead Road to northbound Parker Hill Road, continuing on to Stagecoach Road, followed by a left on Fountain Grove Parkway and a left on Mendocino Avenue. Bicyclists going westbound Sinead Road at Parker Hill Road would be required to follow the detour. 
For those traveling westbound from Rincon Valley, we anticipate drivers will use alternate routes like Highway 12 or Mark West Springs Road. Detour route maps will be available on the project website. Next slide, please. Chenate Road is an emergency access route, and we know there are concerns related to access for emergency vehicles as well as for evacuation routes. The design team has worked with the Traffic Engineering Division, Santa Rosa Fire Department, and Santa Rosa Police Department to develop contingency plans in case of an emergency. Construction would be halted and the road fully opened. If necessary, Santa Rosa Police can reverse the westbound closure at Terra Linda Drive to allow evacuation westbound on Sinead Road. Traffic signal timing can be modified remotely at the signalized intersections on Sinead Road to allocate more time in any direction for an evacuation. At this time, I would like to go back to Eric to continue the presentation. Thank you, Mike. I want to elaborate on the point that in the event of a potential emergency, we are taking a proactive approach. We will have the ability to shut down the project to facilitate any necessary emergency actions that may be required. We will be working closely with Santa Rosa police and fire throughout the project, in particular during extreme weather events such as red flag warnings. If necessary, we will put the contractor on temporary suspension to evaluate these conditions. And now we would like to transition to the Q&A portion of our program. Mark, can you give us some guidance on how this portion will be handled? Yes, thank you, Eric. <laughs> First, I wanted to mention that a recording of this presentation will be made available and put on the project website so others can see it later. Now tonight, if you have a question for our panelists, please follow these directions. Select the raise your hand function in Zoom if you have a question. If you are calling from a phone, however, you can dial star nine to raise your Zoom hand. The Zoom host, Roberta, will unmute your microphone when it's your turn to ask your question or provide your input. We ask that you be courteous and keep to no more than two minutes or less so that we can allow as many people as possible to ask questions. If you hear your question asked and answered, please lower your hand so we can get through as many questions and comments as possible. As we hear the questions, Eric will assign it Eric or Greg will assign it to the person who can best respond. Now, if you have a question regarding your personal sewer or water connection or your driveway access or any other issue specific to your situation, please contact us separately by email or phone for your personal specific questions. A phone number and email are available on the project website at SineadSewerProject.com and we will also post them tonight after questions. So Roberta, are you ready for the first uh, participant to ask a question or provide a comment? Yes. So our first uh, speaker is Kara King. Kara, I'm allowing you to talk. Go ahead. Kara, you can go ahead. King, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead and make your comment or ask your question. Perhaps uh, we'll go on to the next person and we can get back to Cara if she can raise her hand again. Okay, the next speaker is Sonia Taylor. Sonia, I'm allowing you to talk and unmuting you, so go ahead and unmute your microphone and go ahead and make a question or comment. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Sonia Taylor. Hi, Eric. Eric is familiar with me. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one of the presenters said that there would be 24 hour closures of some roads for the duration. Um, and then those details were not provided. So I'm curious what that is. Um, the um, The detours out. I live on Lamitas Lane. 
um, right turn onlys in and out of driveways and roads with the closure of Mendocino and Sinead essentially or the extreme difficulty getting through. I'm curious if uh, coming out of Lamitas Lane onto Sinead we will be able to turn left and I'm curious with regard to an emergency would a uh, predicted um, high wind event be enough to shut the project down or would you want to wait to see whether it really happened? I'm, I'm very concerned about the evacuations having had to evacuate obviously in 2017. So those are my questions, thank you. Hi Sonia, uh, I will let uh, Mike Van Mitty answer the traffic questions. With regard to the emergency though, I can speak to that. Uh, we, like I said in, in my little uh, part of the presentation, we, w when in doubt, we are going to, we have the authority and the contract is written in such a way that we will uh, make the contract with plate over and open traffic up as necessary, even the event of evaluating uh, whether the emergency is, is significant or not. Um, we, we won't wait till it occurs before we do that. So we have the discretion to, to, to take that action in the event of an emergency. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Eric, and thanks, Sonia, for the question. So, Roberta, can I have you pull up slide number 22, please? Yes, just a moment. Thank you. And while that's coming up, uh, Sonia, I, I did, um, we'll talk briefly about um, specifically your location, um, but this presentation is targeted to a general audience and we'd be happy to discuss specifically your access and detour routes that you would need to, to take um, specifically to, to your location. Um, so, you know, after the meeting, please feel free to reach out to us and, and you know, we could discuss um, that with you. Perfect. Thanks, Roberta. So, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, can we go back one more to 21? My apologies. Paul, in the meantime, would you like to comment on the uh, uh, emergency question that Sonia raised? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sonia. So yeah, we have had a number of conversations uh, leading up to tonight's community meeting and definitely do understand the concerns of our community regarding evacuations. Uh, we have a plan in place right now uh, to not only be able to proactively shut the job site down in advance of a a significant weather event, whether or not it's a red flag warning or more, something more of a critical fire condition that would affect uh, specifically the lower elevations of Santa Rosa. A lot of the red flags that we see are in the upper elevations, but we'll continue to monitor those conditions. Um, but we're also working on a plan to have the Know Your Ways Out updated specific to this project and this location. So you'll see later on uh, towards the end of the, the meeting and the question answers that there will be a website uh, for Know Your Ways Out, uh, which is a an opportunity for our community to know all the different ways out throughout Santa Rosa. Uh, one of the things that we don't typically include in that are actual um, emergency evacuation access points. Uh, we will temporarily uh, during this project have a map up that specifically shows those um, and we will potentially use them uh, based on the conditions uh, of an emergency. So plans are in place to use them if need be and have people aware of where they're at. And that'll also play into how we message uh, to the community in the event of an emergency. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, and Sonia, so from this map, you could see on Chinate Road between Mendocino Avenue and Humboldt Street, we will have traffic open in each direction. However, there will be turn restrictions. So depending on the stage of construction, we, we will always keep access to side streets and driveways. However, you may be limited to right turns in and right turns out. As we go east on Chenet, east of Humboldt Street, at that point, it's eastbound only one way. Um, so any, 
any access at that point would have to be from the eastbound direction. Thank you, Mike. And the speaker is uh, Kara King. Has, we're going to allow her to talk and see if we can hear her this time. Kara, you can unmute your microphone. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Uh, sorry about the first time I was double muted. Um, I am just curious, you mentioned that we want to minimize disruptions and most of the things that we heard about were traffic disruptions. I want to know, are we going to experience any sewer service disruptions? And if so, is there any way for us to be notified ahead of time and with how much lead time? Greg, do you want to answer that question? Yes. Hi. Um, we will have a full-time inspector on the project site at all times during construction. We're not just going to shut down uh, the sewer service or your water service without plenty of notification. So you'll be notified along the way. It'll be very brief while they make the, the connection of your sewer lateral into the new main. And then, so that way you can plan for it. And if you don't have a, a sewer lateral uh, coming from the new sewer, if you're not involved in that, then uh, would, would uh, service be affected? Greg? So I'd like to hand that to uh, Cy Penry uh, with the city technician. Hello, Kara. Thank you for your question also. Yes, I'm a civil engineering technician for the city of Santa Rosa. Sewer lateral interruptions are very brief on construction sites. It's the guys that are making the tie-in when they remove your old lateral connection and hooking up the new one. That only lasts for about 15 minutes to 30 minutes when that tie-in is being made. Other disruptions when it comes to water, if you're in the area of the new water installation is, at times we have to make tie-ins and those tie-ins usually run in the vicinity of approximately four hours. But there's a great advance notice on that. And for areas like businesses that need to be kept in water, we supply a water tanker truck for that. So if you're a resident, so you could be without water for half a day or in the range of half a day. Thank you, Sai. And there are no more hands raised as far as the attendees. Mark, you're muted. Okay. Well, I would like to thank everyone for participating tonight. To continue to stay informed and get information on the project, visit the project website at Sinead sewerproject.com. Roberta, could you maybe put that slide up so people could see that? That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. There is a link on the website to sign up for construction update details, or you can send an email to us at info at sewerproject.com and we will put you on that list. You can see on the screen, there is also a construction hotline phone number, 707-385-1239. This is for your use once construction starts, if, if you should have questions or an issue near your property. And to be prepared in advance, should there be an emergency of some kind, as Paul mentioned, please visit www.srcity dot org forward slash know your ways out. Again, construction will begin later this year in the fall and we will continue to keep you informed as the project progresses. With that, thank you all for joining us tonight and for your participation. Good night.